Hi, this is Frank Schaefer. For the last uh, 50 years, I've been watching American politics from the point of view of someone who grew up in the religious right as the son of a fundamentalist pastor who then became an evangelical phenomenon, selling millions of books. My dad's name was Francis Schaefer, and as a young man, I was his nepotistic sidekick. And we were touring the country trying to talk recalcitrant evangelicals into taking a, quote, stand against abortion, because most evangelical leaders back in 1973, when Roe v. Wade came down, were, believe it or not, either pro-choice or ambivalent. They said this was a Catholic issue. When my dad died in 1984, soon after that, I decided I did not want to spend the rest of my life in the big time God business, a business peopled by crooks and liars, con artists, and the most cynical kind of humans, those who use people's spiritual longings against those people in order to raise money from them in a kind of a nonstop pyramid scheme. Fast forward to the present. As I look back over the last 30 years of my progressive activism, one of the things that I have been doing consistently during that time is warning my friends in both the secular media based out of New York, primarily in Washington, DC, the academic community where I have toured numerous times to every single Ivy League school and spoken many times and many other colleges, hundreds of speaking gigs in which I have talked about my own journey, my memoir, Crazy for God, that details my passage out of the evangelical right. And I have struck one theme consistently throughout. I've told those who are outside of the evangelical community that the evangelical right wing, as it has been rising up through the ranks of American politics, as it has forged groups like the Federalist Society that placed every single judge on the bench for Donald Trump across the country, including the Supreme Court, giving him the list of who to nominate. No one he nominated was not on that list and other organizations well-funded by the right wing, the Koch brothers and others, all of whom back in the day I knew as an evangelical son of a leader and then a leader myself. The one note I have been striking is a note of warning saying, take these people seriously. And whether it's the New York Times that refused to review evangelical books or even take note of them because they were being sold in churches and evangelical and Christian bookstores, whether it's those who poo-pooed the power of the Roman Catholic Church and reduced their criticism of it to the child molestation cases that were burgeoning for the last 40 or 50 years, whether it is the talking head commentators on television, with very few exceptions, and only relatively recently did anybody take seriously things such as the Reconstructionist movement that called for a return to a, quote, Bible-based theocracy, which they imagined the Bay State Colony and the founding of the United States was, which it never was, that is a lie. Figures such as Rus S. Rashtuni and other Reconstructionist theonomist leaders that no one has heard of out there, you probably have not, but were followed by evangelical leaders, followed by people like Mike Pence, who built his quote, Christian ministry into politics based on that, followed by the people who started Amy Coney Barrett's cult in which women are to be to men following the biblical mandate of the Old Testament. These people knew who these folks were. Consistently, I have tried to tell people in the Democratic Party, when I have met with them, when I've talked to people like Nancy Pelosi, as I did at her home a number of years and others, they are coming for you. The evangelical right is serious. There is a theocracy movement in this country, and it was too far-fetched for them to believe much as it might have been too far-fetched in the early 1930s for members of the Jewish community in France and Germany and Holland and the UK to believe in the rise of fascism, that in the end, this would result in a deadly situation for them. Well, if I'm the canary in the coal mine, I have not died yet, as the rising poisonous gas of the evangelical religious right, the Christian nationalist movement, the white Christian nationalist movement has overcome us this country, taken over the Republican Party and reduced it to something that is completely foreign to American politics, and that is a party of theocracy. Now we have a Supreme Court majority 
that in one short week has handed down rulings that have turned women into second-class citizens and made war on their reproductive rights, opened the door to challenging contraceptive as well as abortion rights based on the fact that many contraceptives are abortifacients if you consider a fertilized egg floating around in the uterus before it's even implanted a human being. We now have talk of rescinding gay rights, gay marriage, a war on transgender people, on and on and on. The court has bent to the will of the oil companies and the gas companies and the coal companies, now rolling back the Environmental Protection Agency's ability to regulate and give us clean air. We are now on the cusp of a fascist state run by people not with a national socialist agenda as happened in Germany and in Spain and Portugal and the other fascist countries, Mussolini's Italy and so forth in the 30s, but another agenda. And that is a return to what they regard as biblical absolutes. We are in exactly the same position as the settler movement on the West Bank of occupied Palestine that looks to the Old Testament to give them the, I guess, okay, to build towns and villages, write laws, seize land, and so forth. We are in the same place as the Iranians were as they watched their country taken over by the Ayatollah Khomeini and the other Ayatollahs that have come since, turning them into a fundamentalist Islamic state. We are in the position of those people who routinely are arrested and tortured in Saudi Arabia for opposing the Islamic State there. This is no longer America, this is a theocracy. We are on the same page as India, led by Modi and his nationalist Hindus. We are not exempt from world history. And right now in the world, there is a spirit of fundamentalist revival, whether in Islam or Hinduism or Christianity, wherever you touch it, and it is extraordinarily ugly. But I'm a little bit pissed off in the sense that I am reduced to saying, I told you so. You can go back through my commentary over the last 10, 15, 20 years. You can look at my books and I have been saying, take these people seriously. Take the religious right and the reconstructionists seriously. They are coming for you. Well, now they have arrived. And belatedly, the New York Times suddenly gets all interested and starts having articles about evangelical Christians after Trump was elected and the influence they had on his election campaign. People like Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. Billy Graham, who is pro-choice, Franklin Graham, a far-right Christo-fascist. And what we do now is realize that we are on the cusp of a new place in American history. It is late in the day, but I am telling you now that the choice is not between democracy and fascism, but between democracy and theocracy, where quote unquote biblical absolutes from the Old Testament replace the constitution. This is what they are after. If you look inside Amy Coney's brain, what you would see there is someone raised from childhood in a cult, groomed, an intelligent, brilliant woman groomed to be a leader in this new movement, a real Manchurian candidate coming through the Federalist Society. And the same would be true of the other justices on the Supreme Court who are conservatives. They have been groomed, come up through a movement that my father helped start with the Federalist Society and other similar movements. And we now have sown the wind and reaped the whirlwind. We are paying the price for the leaders of the Democratic Party not taking religion seriously. They're still not doing it. For instance, just one example, they don't understand that all the Hispanic fundamentalist Christians, just because some of their skin is brown, just because they're in a demographic that is different than white evangelicals, may not be on the side of the Democrats when it comes to election time in place after place in America because of the fundamentalist and charismatic religion and the extremist charismatic religion they adhere to that is very much in line with the fundamentalist agenda of theocracy. And the same goes for many members of the African-American community, the black community. There are fundamentalist Christians in that community who have a total agreement with many of the white evangelicals. What we have in America now is a choice between a humanistic, scientifically based secular humanism 
that allows for human rights on the basis of human dignity and an aspiration towards a future where we are all equal, where our rights are defended, or descending into the mire of a kind of a theocracy that will land us in a Christian version of Iran at some point. There is only one way out of this, and that is to not just vote against the Republican Party, but to decimate it in the next elections. If we can even get an accurate count, as the Supreme Court is now taking on a case in which they threaten to allow the states and the legislatures that have been taken over by the Republicans rewrite our election laws with impunity to make sure that only Republicans can win through both gerrymandering and also refusing to accept election results in exactly the way Donald Trump wanted. Donald Trump is not the problem. Get that straight in your head. The hearings are so interesting, but Donald Trump is not the problem. The fact that he's a seditious crook is not our biggest problem. Our biggest problem is the fact that we have a white nationalist evangelical movement in this country that is making alliances with the Hispanic evangelical fundamentalist movement across the board to win elections based on quote unquote biblical absolutes. And those biblical absolutes turn women into second class citizens. Kiss those careers goodbye. Kiss the ability to have contraceptives and health care that allow you to have a career. Gay, marriage, gender equity, all of this is going to go away. Get serious. It's too bad that people did not heed me and some other people that have been talking very seriously about this. My friends like Brian McLaren and others who have told the truth for years about what the evangelical religious right wants. We have not been listened to. And now we're in a place where exactly what we've been predicting for 20, 25, 30 years has come to pass. It's time to just say it. And that is that the Democrats and the left have completely dropped the ball and been inattentive. They have not seen this coming and now we are here. My name is Frank Schaefer.